Getting into any new hobby can be intimidating, but with the wisdom of those who were once in your shoes, you can avoid your experience looking like this. Number one, come up with an effective way to hide RC-related expenses from your spouse. If your spouse is sitting next to you, we actually meant to say that you should work in some bribes so they'll keep turning a blind eye, like flowers. Jokes aside, this hobby can become expensive quick if you don't set up a budget for it and plan for the unexpected. Sure, you can afford that $400 Warbird, but can you afford to buy new gear for it when you eventually rip it out? On that topic, only fly what you can afford to crash. Generally speaking, a common phrase in our hobby is, bigger flies better. But if you're shaking and sweating at the sticks every time you go up because you don't want to lose your $2,000 investment, the financial stress of it can really take the fun out of it. Fly what you can afford. Number two, roll out, don't pull out. Pulling out is a risky way to avoid disaster, specifically in RC. This advice specifically would have saved Ben and I a lot of money as beginner pilots. If you lose orientation and find yourself inverted and panicking, the worst thing you can try to do is pull out of it. Going full throttle towards the ground and then abruptly loading up the wing is a recipe for disaster. Instead, practice rolling to upright. Pulling out will almost always eat up more altitude. Instead, simply roll the right stick, take a breath, and then get ready to pull out of the maneuver once your wheels are facing down. Number three, throttle is more than an on-off switch. This is something we commonly see with beginners. They either have the throttle at max or completely off. We like to call them full throttle or no throttle Joe. Hello darkness, my old friend. There's only two times you should be using full power as a beginner. For takeoffs, but most planes don't require this, and for getting out of a bad situation. Most planes will put along great at 50 to 60% throttle, and this will make everything happen a lot slower, which in turn will help you pick up skills quicker and give you more precious flight time to learn too. If you're ever watching someone who is truly great and wondering, how the hell do they have so much control? It's probably because they are using the thing you can't see, which is throttle. This is true with everything from airplanes to helis to quadcopters and even cars. Number four, be aware of the transmitter trap. What we're referring to here is the trap beginners often fall into when buying their first setup. A lot of beginners will purchase a RTF aircraft, meaning one that comes with a barely functional transmitter, and then quickly want to upgrade to something with a screen, like a DX6, and then realize that's not all that much better, and upgrade again to a insert good radio here. Guess what? Now you spent over a grand in transmitters that you didn't need. Buy it right the first time. Spectrum-wise, we swear by the OG DX9 and DX18 Gen 1, or if you want to go against the grain, grab a Radio Master TX16 or a FreeSky X18, especially if you're a nerd. The same can be said about chargers. Go with something that's at least two ports, 6S capable, and can truly pump out 10 amps out of the gate, even if you only have the one battery. Trust us, this hobby is addictive, and you'll quickly learn the lesson of buying it right the first time. Number five, the three mistakes high rule. Learning a new maneuver or testing something that's a little risky? Go three mistakes high. By this, we mean you should be able to mess up three times and still have enough altitude to recover. Here's an example of me only being two mistakes high while messing with an FCG. Oh my, I'm gonna crash. Yep. Had I been one mistake higher, or some would argue also had a gyro, I would have been fine. Now, there's a caveat here. Once you practice it up high and feel confident, start bringing it down lower and lower each time. The only way to build confidence flying low is to fly low. Number six, never ever stop flying the plane. There's no such thing as an appropriate time to stop flying the plane. Even if you lose orientation, don't give up the fight. The airplane can be recovered from worse situations than you think. And on that topic, don't stop flying the plane until it's completely stopped moving, whether that be in chunks on the runway or in one piece in the pits. We see this often. A new pilot's wheels touch the ground, and then their head turns away from the aircraft to continue a conversation. Meanwhile, the plane veers off into a fence. Again, this one may not sound obvious, but the plane's not done flying when it's on the ground, it's done flying when it's no longer moving. Number seven, don't underestimate an ugly airplane. Don't start with a jet or a warbird, no matter how much you love those planes. Go get an Aeroscout. Yes, we know it looks like a drone designed by a toddler, but it really is the best modern beginner aircraft in our experience, hands down. This applies to more than just the aircraft you fly though. Avoid going out for your first flight on a super windy day at a field surrounded by trees. Better yet, reach out to an AMA club near you and find an instructor. A lot of clubs have a supply of trainer aircraft for those that don't have them, so even if you bought that jet or warbird despite our advice, they can supply a trainer for you to at least get your feet wet. Speaking of wet feet, number eight, float planes. Float planes are a blast, but probably not something you should try unless you're a good swimmer or have access to a retrieval boat of some kind. 
It's not a matter of if your float plane will flip, it's a matter of when. And trust us, there's nothing more painful than watching your flipped aircraft drift further and further away with no way of getting it back. Bonus! Avoid flying at the ocean unless you've coated the corrosive parts of your plane in things such as Corrosion X or brush on electrical tape, especially the electronics. But with the extra wind the ocean invites, it's probably best to just stick to fresh water anyway. Number 9. Keep it simple stupid. Yes, there's a million cool mixes you can do, flight modes, voice callouts, etc. with these newer radios, but ultimately, 99% of the time these serve more as a distraction than anything else. Do you really need to know the altitude of your aircraft every 20 seconds, or the g-force? No, just watch the damn thing fly. On this topic, be aware that a lot of telemetry receivers are gimmicks sold at a huge markup, and ultimately, that money is probably better spent buying extra glue or parts. Number 10. The Importance of Good Habits Per the law of primacy, practice makes permanent. Therefore, perfect practice makes perfect. Get in the habit of enabling a throttle cut early on, every time, no excuses. Avoid using exclusively ailerons when the wing is stalled. Perform a control tech every time, right before you take off. The key to memorizing something is to give it meaning. Figure out why you shouldn't be messing with the ailerons when your aircraft's wing is stalled. We could go on forever here, but check out our best habits video if you'd like a comprehensive list. The link will be in the description below. Number 11. The Importance of Center of Gravity There's a phrase that was made famous by our lord and savior Josh Bixler, a nose-heavy plane flies poorly, and a tail-heavy plane only flies once. While this isn't 100% accurate for every situation, it's a good phrase to keep in the back of your head when you're uncertain about center of gravity. The good news is that Ben and I have owned hundreds of RC planes over the years, and we've yet to get one that the manual didn't specify an incredibly conservative nose-heavy CG. Number 12. The rudder isn't just for turning on the ground. There's plenty of guys out there that have scraped by without learning how to use the rudder beyond this, but that doesn't mean you should, too. Eventually, you'll get a model that actually requires using the rudder to make the plane fly in a controlled and coordinated manner, so you might as well start learning how to use it from the beginning. Number 13. You suck. This might seem harsh, but if you just had your first solo flight on an Aeroscout, it's important that it doesn't get to your head. There's no shame in recognizing that you're a beginner pilot. Sure, you might have picked up a steal of a P-47 or a swap meet right after soloing, but please wait before even considering to fly it until you have an instructor at your field that can help and a lot more flights with the Aeroscout first. There's a lot more to flying a bird like that than being able to instantly recognize the orientation of the aircraft. And in reality, it's more than you can learn from just a video. It's something that just gets developed with experience. If you're interested, look up the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's a cognitive bias I share to my full-scale students right after I solo them as a reality check and a way to stay grounded. Pun intended. It applies to new RC pilots as well. Number 14. Make friends. This goes in line with joining a club, but making friends in this hobby will make your experience infinitely better. Not only is the experience best shared among friends, but being able to ask friends to borrow a tool that you forgot can make or break a day at the field, especially when some fields are 40 plus minutes away. For that reason, we recommend joining a club because it's the easiest way to meet like-minded folks. Sure, you might run into some of the stereotypes we've mentioned in our previous videos, but that isn't to say there's folks out there that make up for those bad apples tenfold. Don't paint everyone with the same brush. Number 15. Have fun. This one goes out to our friend Bob of the Southern New Hampshire Flying Eagles who preaches the same thing. At the end of the day, hobbies are supposed to be fun and that can be difficult to do when you take it too seriously. Learn to laugh off the pre-flight failures, mid-airs, and crashes. You'll become a better pilot from all of it. And while we're on the topic, don't be afraid to show up to the field with a duct tape plane. We're not going to lie and say that there's no shame in showing up with a destroyed aircraft, but the aircraft you're prepared to toss in the garbage is also the same aircraft you're going to learn the most from. So maybe hang on to it and push yourself with it. It might just turn into your favorite aircraft because you can actually have fun with it without care of whether or not it comes home in chunks or not and looks like a beauty queen. Oh god. Oh god. Kill it, kill it, kill the throttle! Oh, it's still alive! As a quick community update, congrats to Crash B. Gordon for winning our June photo contest on our Discord with this awesome shot of their modified timber. If you want to participate, join our Discord for a fun supportive community and submit your best shots there. The winner gets a free limited edition sticker featured in a video and their photo in an annual tail heavy community calendar. If this video inspired you to rig a device to falsify others' telemetry readings to show you're a superior pilot, go ahead and give it a like. Or if you'd like more tips on hiding purchases from your wife, maybe even hit subscribe. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll see you next Saturday with a new upload.